my name is Kyle Rhodes and this is my story. So growing up, I really didn't have any sort of church background. Um, I, did, I wasn't a part of any sort of church activities. Uh, and when I did go to church, it was like pulling teeth. So it, was, it wasn't something that I really wanted to do. And then in high school, I started to go through some things in my life that really sort of rocked my world. When I was a freshman in high school, my parents got divorced. And that was really the first big thing in my life that kind of happened uh, that wasn't good. And so throughout high school, I looked to just glorify myself. Um, I wanted to um, make myself happy. Um, and ultimately, I did a lot of things to please other people. The more I lived to glorify myself and the more I lived to do the things that I thought made myself happy, the more lonely I became, the more unfulfilled, the more unsatisfied I became. And I was just really in a dark place. Um, I felt like I didn't have anybody to turn to and I felt like I had to handle this all on my own. And so I didn't tell anybody what I was struggling with. When I was a senior, I dealt with really bad social anxiety and because of the things I was going through at home and I was in a relationship that wasn't going well. I felt like I couldn't tell my parents what I was going through just because they were going through some things of their own and I didn't want to bother them with it. And I also felt like I couldn't tell my friends either because I didn't want to ruin my status. I didn't want them to think of me any less. I didn't want to lose um, my image. Going into my freshman year of college, uh, I continued to seek after these same things. I rushed to fraternity so that I could continue living my lifestyle the way I was living it. Fortunately, God met me where I was at, um, at that low point in my life, um, when I was feeling just really lonely and really feeling unsatisfied. And I met this guy named Andrew Barber. He was on staff with the campus ministry at Missouri State. And he befriended me. I met up with him a few times throughout my first semester. And he shared these passages from the Bible that I'd never really heard before. And it was just really cool to see how he lived his life and, and what he was doing. And I'd never had a relationship with any anyone like this before. Um, I'd never had anyone explain things about God in this way before. Uh, in February of my freshman year, he shared this one verse illustration, Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And he explained how Jesus died for my sins and that he died for the stuff that I was struggling with, uh, whether it was my anxiety, whether it was my sin. And it was the first time that I had ever had the gospel laid out in front of me in such a personal way. But I just wasn't really ready to give up my lifestyle. I wasn't really ready to lose my status. And he got me to go to this project later that summer called Kaleo. Um, it's a nine-week discipleship project. And at Kaleo, my group leader, his name was Zach Woldridge, and he continued to process the gospel with me. And he bought me my first Bible. Me and him had been through some similar things, and so it made me seem like it was possible to uh, have a relationship with Christ. Um, and that I didn't have to do this life on my own anymore. And so that summer, I gave my life to Christ and I got baptized to profess my faith uh, to the world that summer. It was just really cool seeing how God was using these things in my past to bring me to Him. So that summer at Kaleo, I learned how to share God's Word with other people. And I didn't think that that was really gonna happen when I came to Christ. I thought it was just gonna be like, oh, this is just something I did and then I live my life for Christ. But part of living your life for Christ is sharing His love with other people. God has transformed my heart into living this selfish life that, oh, I just want to glorify myself and do things that are going to make me happy. But instead, living a life that's going to glorify God. I'm so happy. I mean, there's so much joy that I have now that I didn't have before. I feel like my life has a real purpose now, whereas before, I just felt like there wasn't anything. You don't have to go through this life alone. There is hope in Christ. I have found that to be very true in my life and God will meet you where you're at. Um, you just have to trust in that and believe in that.